Hi friends, my name is Leah DePascal and I'm thrilled that you've joined me for this online class. We're going to be sharing the whys and ways of studying the Bible. Now I wish we could be together in one place, but I'm hoping you'll fully participate even though I can't see you on the other side of the screen. Whether you're brand new at reading the Bible or you've been studying scripture for years, I am trusting and believing that God will reveal something amazing to each of us during this session. You know, the fact that you've chosen to participate in this class is proof that God is actively working in you, drawing you to himself because your heart and your mind is open to the truths about his word. Now, with that being said, I'd like to ask you a few, few questions. Have you ever struggled with reading and understanding scripture? Have you ever picked up your Bible and wondered, where on earth do I start? Have you ever been intimidated or compared yourself to someone who has studied the Bible for a really long time and knows scripture well? If your answer is yes to any of these questions, I want you to know that you're in good company. I've had these same struggles and I've felt intimidation too, not just once, but many times. And you know, in those moments, I have to remember, remind myself that God is always with me. And you know what? He's with you too. He's our best guide and our counselor when it comes to studying scripture. And he wants us to lean in and learn all that we can about him so that we can live joyful and productive lives through the rhythms of his love and grace. So let's talk about some of the reasons why we should read the Bible. Now this isn't going to be an exhaustive list, but four important points to take note of as we get started. First of all, the Bible contains God's own words breathed out for us. Now, Wendy Blight did a fantastic job explaining this truth in our first session as she unpacked 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. But when we think about God's words that were breathed out from the beginning of time, that those same words are the words that train and equip us for every assignment that he gives us, that's powerful. Second of all, the Bible gives answers to our most important questions. And when unexpected challenges arise and life becomes more complicated than we bargain for, only scripture can provide answers to our deepest questions. Thirdly, the Bible pro provides moral instructions for us to live by. It helps us become aware of our temptations, the sin that we struggle with, and false teachings. You see, I look at God's word sort of like a set of guardrails that are designed to direct our paths and keep us from having spiritual head-on collisions that can affect every part of our lives, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And fourth, God instructs us to read and meditate on his word as our daily spiritual food. Even Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I love this quote by D.L. Moody when he said, The Bible is not given for us for our information, but for our transformation. You know, if we want to live our lives to be truly transformed, we must first get into the scriptures, read the scriptures, and allow the scriptures and the Holy Spirit to renew our hearts and our minds. So what can we learn? What can we gain from studying God's word? First of all, God's word is a revelation of himself. You see, from the beginning of time, God has been revealing himself to mankind through his creation, his written word, and his son, Jesus Christ. He reveals to us his character, his ways, his thoughts, his glory, and every time we read our Bibles, we can be assured that God is speaking to us. Secondly, God reveals his grand story. You know, from Genesis to Revelation, God is telling us about his sovereign reign, his perfect will, and his master plan. The Bible is not a collection of random stories or poems or proverbs. It's one grand story that runs from cover to cover a story that unfolds in four major sections and finds its complete unity in Jesus Christ. That grand story is referred to as the meta-narrative of the Bible. And those four sections are creation, the fall of man, the redemption of Christ, and then the final consummation or restoration when Christ returns and comes back to get us and to set up his kingdom here on this earth. 
Now, knowing that there is a master plan woven throughout scripture is very helpful. And discovering that master plan for ourselves can be very exciting. But you know what? Honestly, the journey we travel along in studying God's word, it takes time. It takes patience and a willing heart. It takes intentionality and consistency as we look to God for guidance. You know, my husband and I, his name is Keith, and we own a home building business, and we get to work very closely with clients, helping them through each phase of the construction process. And you know what the most important component of the entire project is? It's a reliable set of blueprints of house plans that have been drawn up by a skilled architect. In order to properly build a house for our clients, the instructions and the codes on those blueprints must be studied and closely followed, not just once, but on a daily basis. Now to an unskilled eye, the information on these blueprints can seem random and confusing, but when they are reviewed over and over again, important details begin to emerge that are crucial to the overall structure and the purpose of the house. Scripture is like a set of blueprints for us for us to follow, and every detail has significant meaning and should not be overlooked. Every major theme in scripture, every doctrine, every story, every prophecy, every psalm, every fulfillment, every book, chapter, verse, and word, it's all woven together with great purpose that points to the grand plan of God. The next point is that God's word is a prescription for healthy living and holy living. Psalm 1, 1 through 3 speaks about the person who delights and meditates on God's word day and night. And it says that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaves do not wither, and whatever they do prospers. I love these verses. They remind me of an illustration from a seminary professor who used a tree versus a pipe comparison to demonstrate our spiritual life. He explained how a pipe and a tree both have the ability to transfer water, but only the tree benefits from the water running through it. As believers in Christ, we just don't transfer the living water of God by studying it and then sharing it with others. We are also filled by it, nourished by it, strengthened by it. We are transformed by it, and we even produce fruit, spiritual fruit. God's Word also equips us and helps us live out the principles of holiness as we walk in a world that is unholy. Another reason why, another thing that we gain and learn from Scripture is that God's Word helps us to grow in relationship and enjoyment with Him and with others. You see, our relationship with God should be our number one priority, and our relationship with others should bring unity and glory to God. The only way that we can truly enjoy God is to know Him personally. And we come to know Him personally by studying His Word and spending time with Him in prayer and worship. 